to welcome everyone to our Academic Achievement Night and Scholarship Ceremony. And before we begin recognizing these wonderful students, I do have some thank yous as there are many, many folks that help to make this night possible. First off, and, and a very big thank you goes to our entire school counseling department. They put together all of the parts and pieces of tonight's event and it really could not happen without them. And I think the nice part is they get to see the students from when they enter our building and work with them right through um, as we approach graduation. Thank you to Mr. Eaton and our tech crew for ensuring that everything is set and ready to go. Um, I would like a, a special thank you to all of our speakers that come this evening and, and have a chance to interact with our students and get a chance to meet them and present them um, with some pretty, pretty incredible awards. A big thank you for sure goes out to our teachers and our entire staff. Um, and I, I truly feel this and believe this, that we are so, so lucky to have such a dedicated group of adults working with our students. And I cannot say enough how appreciative I am of the number of times that they go above and beyond to help create really excellent opportunities for our students. Next, I would like to thank our families and friends who are in attendance this evening for all of the support you've given your students and all of our students over the years. This event, although a single night, signifies many, many years of hard work, and I hope our students understand and appreciate that there are so many people behind the scenes that have played a part in getting them to the point that they are this evening. Finally, I want to thank our students who are the reason that we have all come together here this evening. I want to thank you for all that you have done so far for Noble High School and let you know that we are incredibly excited to see what the future brings you and, and what you accomplish moving forward. At this point, I would like to turn things over to our Director of School Counseling, Nancy Samard. Thank you, Mr. Dufort. So we're gonna be begin the evening tonight with a couple of appointments to our military. And our first appointment is Mr. John Murphy with the U.S. Merchant Marine appointment. Thank you. Um, I'm a graduate of the United States Merchant Marine Academy and currently sell as a chief engineer on a merchant ship. The United States Merchant Marine Academy, located in Kings Point, New York, on the North Shore of Long Island, is one of the five federal academies. Nominated by Senator Shaheen, Charlotte Smith is one of approximately 275 students selected to attend the academy out of 2,000 applicants. Completion of the academic four-year and regimental curriculum, which includes three trimesters at sea on U.S. flag merchant ships, as well as an internship leads to a bachelor's degree, a merchant marine officer's license as deck officer, engine officer, and a commission in the United States Naval Reserve. An appointment to the academy is the equivalent of a scholarship worth $220,000 over the four-year period. This remarkable achievement reflects great credit on Charlotte and demonstrates that she is already living the academy motto, act a non verba, deeds, not words. I take great pleasure and consider a high honor on behalf of Vice Admiral Joanna Noonan, Superintendent of the Academy, to recognize the appointment of Charlotte Smith to the United States Merchant Marine Academy, Class of 2028, if Charlotte would come forward. Next, we have an appointment to the U.S. Air Force, and that is being delivered by Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Adele Belisle. Uh, good evening. My name is Dr. Adele Belisle. I'm a retired Air Force officer and serve as the admissions liaison officer for the United States Air Force Academy. I'm also a 1994 graduate of the Air Force Academy and Yarmouth High School, which is about an hour from here. It is my pleasure today to represent the United States Air Force 
and the United States Space Force to present an appointment to the United States Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado to Benjamin Van Den Heuvel. This appointment is going to a very deserving young man and is a four-year scholarship to the United States Air Force Academy. Benjamin will join his great uncles in the long blue line of USAFA, as well as his grandfather and uncle who served in the United States Air Force. To develop as leaders, cadets at the Air Force Academy take part in a wide variety of programs, including flying aircraft, free fall parachuting, competitive athletics, military training, and foreign exchange programs around the world. At the same time, they attend classes ranging from aeronautical and electrical engineering to history and political science. At the end of the four years, they will earn a Bachelor of Science in their choice of 28 majors and will be commissioned as a second lieutenant in either the United States Air Force or Space Force. For Benjamin, graduating from USAFA is only the beginning of his adventure. He will take the skills and knowledge he developed at the Air Force Academy and will serve in one of 33 Air Force or Space Force officer career fields for the next five years and longer if he chooses. He will continue to develop leadership and professional expertise for as long as he serves as an Air Force or Space Force officer. Graduates of the Air Force Academy have gone on to be Rhodes Scholars, corporate industry and community leaders, politicians, generals, Olympic and professional athletes, astronauts, and sometimes even a doctor. Graduates also serve our community and country in many other leadership roles. So, on behalf of the President of the United States, Benjamin Van Den Heuvel is hereby appointed as a cadet in the United States Air Force Academy, class of 2028. So congratulations. I don't know if your parents want a picture. No. Okay, this is the official way you deal with military picture. Come on. We got it for your parents. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Congratulations to both students. When we hold this um, Academic Achievement Night, we always like to take the time to recognize some of our talented musicians. So at this time, we're going to have a little musical interlude. I'd like to invite Talissa Goulet, Miranda Drake, and Gavin Goulet to the stage to perform Almost There. I am not Miranda Drake. <laughs> Which side do you want me on, Nate? You, um, you can be on this side. What do you want me to be? Anywhere is fine. have time for dancing that's just gonna have to wait a while ain't got time for messing around and it's not my style this old town can slow you down people taking the ease away but I know exactly where I'm going again closer and closer every day and I'm almost there I'm almost there people down here think I'm crazy but I don't care trials and tribulations I've had my share there ain't nothing gonna stop me now Cause I'm almost there I 
I remember daddy told me fairy tales can't come true. You gotta make them happen. It all depends on you. So I'll work real hard each and every day. Things for sure are going my way. Just doing what I do. Look out, boys, I'm coming through and I'm almost there. I'm almost there. People gonna come here from everywhere and I'm almost there. I'm almost there. There's been trials and tribulations. You know I've had my share. But I've climbed a mountain and I've crossed a river and I'm almost there. I'm almost there. I'm almost Thank you, students. Nice job. Now we're going to start recognizing some of our students, and we're going to start with Mr. Dufort. So we have... Uh, first up, one student from our exceptional studies team that has achieved cum laude recognition in this graduating class. Would Christopher Reaver please come up to the stage and receive your certificate? All right, I do not see Christopher. Another award we have is that we also had one student who was working through our virtual programming and also earned cum laude recognition. And if I could have, if she is in attendance, Jasmine Jelinek come up to the stage, please. All right. <laughs> Next, we have Mr. Ben Chase with the Multiple Pathways Honored Student Award. Mr. Chase? Oh, look at you. Hello, my name is Ben Chase, and I'm the director of the Multiple Pathways Alternative Program. It's my honor to present Brianna Dunn with the Multiple Pathways Student of the Year Award. Brie is a far better writer than she gives herself credit for, particularly when she's writing fiction. And while working on writing assignments, she has enjoyed and sometimes endured countless revision sessions with me. I've seen her time and time again be more interested in an excellent final product than the grade she receives. And to me, this is the mark of a true scholar. But Brie should be equally celebrated for the human that she is. Our younger students have looked up to Brie because she has been an example of how it is possible to be at the same time tough and kind, smart and humble, independent and connected. Brie has consistently shown others generosity and thoughtfulness. When a student dropped the teacher's cherished plant, Brie used her own hard-earned money to buy the teacher something to replace it. In this instance and many others, she saw that something was wrong and she simply went out and fixed it. She has embodied the motto hanging up high on her pod wall, make things better. Brie has taken responsibility for becoming the best version of herself, improving multiple pathways, and caring for others. I trust that Brie will continue to do the same after graduation, so it is my honor and privilege to present her with the Multiple Pathways Student of the Year Award.
Thank you, Mr. Chase. Now, our next two um, portions of the program are going to involve a lot of students. So I'm going to give you some special instructions, and I want you to listen really carefully because it's going to be important that you follow them. So what's going to happen is I'm going to call up House One teachers in a minute here, and they are going to call all House One students with a GPA of 3.0 or higher to the stage. You're all going to come down and come up this center stairway, and then you're going to make a line. But there may be so many of you that we ha actually have to make a, wait for it, semicircle. Okay? So we just want to make sure we can fit everybody on the stage. We can see all your faces and get our pictures. So try to arrange yourself in a way where we can kind of spread out and make sure that everybody's seen. So at this time, Mr. Rose, please come forward. And I know Ms. Jackson is also going to assist you this evening. Come on down. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mr. Jim Rose. I'm the physics teacher of House One Seniors. And Mr. Bragdon and Mr. Gamish could not be here tonight, so uh, I'm standing in the, in the breach, okay. All right, so my House One Seniors with a grade point average of 3.0 or better, would you please come and take the stage collectively? Well, first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read off the list of students who achieved the rank of cum laude, which, as you can see from your program, means they had a cumulative GPA between 3.0 and 3.59. Now, students, as I call your name off, would you please come up and take the certificate from Ms. Jackson and then head back to the line, please. All right, going in alphabetical order. Cum laude for House One, Liam Allen. Jalessa Brown. <laughs> Naomi Fadden. <laughs> Chloe Fallon. <laughs> Alexander, AKA Cole Feist. Ava Heitman. <laughs> Ashley Hill. <laughs> Jordan Maddox. <laughs> Madison Keefe. Evan Kubik. <laughs> Tucker Levasseur. <laughs> Alexandra Littlefield. <laughs> Nolan Lowry. Madison McNutt. <laughs> Stella Marcotte. <laughs> Molly Moreland. <laughs> Ryan Morin. <laughs> Tim.
Thomas Mulligan. <laughs> Sophia Myers. <laughs> Adria Otash. <laughs> Haley Panette. <laughs> Ariana Richardson. Ariel Santiago. Aiden Sullivan. And Thomas Veit. Congratulations to our cum laude students. Next, uh, we're going to honor our magna cum laude students. And as you can see in your program, these are students that have maintained a cumulative GPA of between 3.6 and 3.89. Beginning our list is Jackson Bagan. Jalen Belanger. Elizabeth Buller. Sean Davis. <laughs> Ella Eckert. <laughs> Isabel Gleason. <laughs> Gavin Golay. Adeline Russell. Nevea Smeaton Cormier. And Trinity Valley. Congratulations to our Magna Cum Laude students. And lastly, um, we'd like to recognize our summa cum laude. As you can see from your program, once again, they have, these students have maintained a cumulative GPA of 3.9 or higher for four years. Beginning in order, Ella Anania. <laughs> Lily Bent. Connor Christensen. Alexis Erickson Fudge. Talissa Goulet. Adam Leach. Alyssa Lemke. <laughs> Isabella Lemke. <laughs> Haley Matthews. <laughs> Megan Mustafa. Katherine Osborne. <laughs> Ian Brutus. <laughs> Willa Russell. <laughs> Natasha Siebert. <laughs> Charlotte Smith.
Chloe Steinauer. Anna Streiner. Emma Talbot. Sophia Tetro. And Alec Terrio. All right, we have two more awards for House One. They are the Outstanding Students. Um, primarily myself, Mr. Bragdon, and Ms. Gamage uh, got together and sort of knocked heads and compared notes. And if I can take just a moment, please. Uh, before I came to this school, when I was teaching at small schools up north, I also directed spring musicals and such. And one of the things that was always a little agonizing was uh, uh, posting the cast. Because I would tell my kids during the auditions, I would say, listen, I say, I know there's some talented people out there, so, but I can't give everybody what they want. There's only so many leads. Okay, I'm just gonna make the best decision I can. And it kind of feels like that, because I work with, uh, please, and this is, this is genuine, I work with so many quality, quality young people. Um, they make getting up in the morning and coming to school no problem at all. They're pretty fun to hang out with. The, the, the teens get a bad rap sometimes. I'll stick up for them. I like my job, because I like my kids, right? and all of them too. But anyway, so yeah, so we have to, uh, there were so many really quality young people to speak of, and so many accolades, and so many things, and you look at the GPAs, you look at the community service hours, you look at the involvement in the school, the clubs, the things like, oh my gosh, there's so many. And I'll be honest with you, it kind of came down to the intangibles, because it's, you're just looking at so many quality young people. And so we just sort of knocked heads together, the three of us, and we've got to find that thing, that intangible, that just sort of makes one person's name stick out just a little bit. Okay. So that is the process we went through. So for everyone that we were considering, uh, they are all to be congratulated. I'll keep that list to myself. Uh, but now, without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to hold you in suspense. I'm going to say who they are, then I'm going to talk about them. Okay. So first for our, our young man. Um, it gives me great pleasure to give the outstanding student from House One to Alec Terrio. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just take a second and uh, give you some information on Alec. Um, like I said, there were so many quality. But Alec um, managed to hold a 4.32 GPA through four years, and this is on top of taking eight AP classes, including AP Biology, AP Chemistry, and with yours truly, AP Physics this year. Uh, so he, he didn't choose an easy road. Um, he's a member of both the, the School National Honor Society and the French National Honor Society. Far more community service hours than were required. Um, and I, I asked a couple of his other teachers, you know, what else can you tell us about him? Mr. Bragdon uh, had him in AP World History last year, and he told me when he found Alec on my list for AP Physics this year, he said, he said, he, he's going to work. He said, he's, you're going to, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to go, okay. And it did. Um, just speaking for myself in, in AP Physics, um, Alec's thorough, consistent, um, calm, not afraid to ask questions, uh, not, not afraid to show I don't understand it, but was just a, a bulldog, a quiet bulldog determination to get it figured out. Um, and just his, his, his personality in class, his ability to get along with his classmates, um, bring all the people into the group when necessary. Um, Alec is, is, we're very happy to have him be this award. So anyway, uh, a couple other teachers. I got some words from them as well. 
What a privilege it has been to teach and get to know Alec. He is the most gifted French student I have ever taught. But what stands out about him for me is his extraordinary kindness, maturity, respect for others, intentionality, and subtle sense of humor. I think the world of him and will miss him next year. He is the best of the best. And from the music department. Alec is a leader in our music department. He plays trombone in the symphonic jazz and the jazz ensemble at school. He is a strong player as shown by him auditioning and being accepted in District 1 Music Festival three times, the District Jazz Festival twice, and twice the main all-state concert band, and then the main state jazz all-state band this year. Alec is always on time, ready for rehearsal, and going the extra mile. Whether it's working to perform a solo in jazz or helping to set up the classroom, he is always ready, he is there. His responses on assignments are always thought out and thorough. He will be truly missed next year as his presence is one that exemplifies of what the music department is. So ladies and gentlemen, one more time, I congratulate Alec Terry. And likewise, we had to just look for that little fine defining thing for our, 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 our young lady. And so once again, I'm just gonna blurt it out and then I'll talk about her, okay? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Mr. Bragdon and Ms. Gamage, it is our pleasure as House One teachers to announce to you our outstanding female student is Willa Russell. All right, well, Willa also maintained a GPA of over 4.0, went way above and beyond her community service hours. Um, she also is a member of both the National Honor Society and the French National Honor Society. Um, her devotion to and her excellence, as I peeked into multiple aspects of the, of the arts, the visual arts in particular, is astounding. And one thing that I'm gonna say about Willa is that of course, she has to take physics. She's, she loves the arts, and she's one of these people that's forced to take physics. And so she got stuck with me. Um, I can tell, now Willa, you hit it really well. Okay, but I can tell that science really isn't her wheelhouse, if you will. Okay, it's just, that's not, it's not how she's programmed. But it doesn't mean that she's not gonna walk in. I'm gonna see the best version of Willa every single day. She, her performance uh, in my class was exceptional. Um, and it's, it's one of these, it, like I said, this is the classic case of the intangible. It's that little thing you can't quite put your finger on, but she adds an incredibly special quality to her presence every single day in class. It's, the consistency is, is amazing. Um, for art, she's taken studio art, sketchbook and creativity, ceramics, sculpture, and even woodworking. I tossed it in there as an art because I've done some woodworking and I'm not artistic and I know that you get a, you know, it's just some art in there, okay. But it's her work ethic. She just brings the best version of herself every day, and that says a lot if you get to know her. Okay. Um, again, from another teacher's perspective, I've known Willa since kindergarten and have loved having her be a part of my family, our friend group, and my classroom. She is thoughtful, insightful, incredibly smart, conscientious, genuine, caring, and an extraordinary artist. She is and has been Beautiful on the inside and out. I will miss her tons, but I can't wait to hear about the magic that she will make in the years to come. And it's just that quiet, that quiet quality that was really captivated us. So once again, I would like to congratulate Willa on her acceptance this year. Thank you, Mr. Rose and the House One students. You did a nice job modeling that semicircle thing. House Two, watch and learn.
At this time, I am pleased to introduce Ms. Ingrid Strange and Mr. Alec Robinson, who are going to be presenting the House Two Academic Awards. Good evening, I'm Ingrid Strange. Um, instructor of English 12, and I'm going to have a little bit of an easier job because Mr. Rose did such a wonderful job that now House 2, we just have to copy that, right? <laughs> so I'm going to call all seniors from House 2 with a 3.0 or higher to the stage and please make a semicircle and fit everybody in. Thank you. Beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to start with cum laude, which is, again, the GPA is 3.0 to 3.59. Starting with Gavin Byrne. <laughs> Brett Kamiski. Landon Downey. Angela Gould. Hannah Greenlaw. Michael Johnson, otherwise known as Sunny. Grace LaMontagne. Calvin Leon. Ryan Lovely. Braden Lukey. Cody Marchant. <laughs> Riley McKenney. <laughs> Angelique Marisola. <laughs> Gabrielle Morin. Jacob Picard. Araya Smith. Luke St. Pierre. Nevaeh Stacy. Hannah Tarbell. Brooklyn Walker. And Declan Winston. All right. I'm going to be 
announcing the magna cum laudes. So these are students with a GPA between, let me check here, people, uh, 3.6 and 3.89. So at the top of the list, we have Sobu Blake. Chris, Christopher Buckman. James Bugato. <laughs> Natasha Gedke. <laughs> Lilu Jardine. <laughs> Rachel Kerner. Cheyenne Leitz. Addison Massey. Sam Nguyen. Owen Porter. Juliana Schmutz. <laughs> Benjamin Vanden Heuvel. <laughs> Mackenzie Warren. <laughs> Clara Williams. and Charlie Woodward. That concludes our magna cum laudes. Now we have the summa cum laudes. These are students with a GPA of 3.9 or higher. At the top of the list, we have none other than Oscar Allen. Mackenzie Blanchett. <laughs> Emily Bowen. <laughs> Milana Brackett. <laughs> Ella Duke. Addison Erickson Fudge. <laughs> Lilia Lambert. <laughs> Kyla Libby. <laughs> Malia Patello. Elsie Powers. And finally, Tanisa Santaloy. We have picked two wonderful, extremely wonderful, outstanding students for our Senior House 2 team. I'm going to have my colleague Ingrid Strange tell you about the first of these two. All right, I'm going to actually call the first one up and have him stand with me. <laughs> Oscar Allen. You're going to stay with me. <laughs> At the beginning of the school year, House Two seniors write a poem in English that begins with four adjectives that students use to describe their character. The four words that Oscar Allen chose were intelligent, dedicated, loyal, and loving. 
and after a year of getting to know Oscar and observing his interactions with friends and classmates, these four words only begin to demonstrate his character. Shannon Scribner, a 10th grade English instructor, noted that, quote, Oscar's academic achievements have always been impressive, but my favorite part about having him as a student is his personality. Oscar makes the classroom a more enjoyable place. He always seems to be having fun. I could be having a bad day, and Oscar's attitude and energy could turn it around. Oscar is a National Honor Society member, and as the advisor, I can say that he exemplifies the four pillars of scholarship, leadership, service, and character. When I told Elizabeth Lane that Oscar had been chosen as one of the students of the year, she sent me the following quote from Anthony Bourdain, an American celebrity chef. Quote, skills can be taught, character, you either have it or you don't. She believes that this quote captures the trajectory, trajectory of Oscar's high school experience and added that, quote, Oscar is developing into a wonderful chef, but it is his depth of character that distinguishes him from the rest and will elevate any of his opportunities coming forward. Oscar participated in the Noble Cooking Club in the eighth grade, which helped to spark his passion for the culinary arts. Since then, he has been a leader in the club as an assistant to Miss Lane, and he was a shoe-in for the culinary program at Sanford Regional Technical Center, and recently won a gold in the Skills USA main culinary arts competition. Ms. Scribner also shared that since I've known Oscar, his passion for culinary arts has driven him to work hard in all of his classes. It is rare to see a young student fully register that their current choices will influence opportunity for the rest of their lives. Many develop this understanding much later. Oscar has been cognizant of this reality for quite some time and recognizes how each part of his education will benefit him later on. Because of this, he has committed himself to succeed in all aspects of his education. And not only that, Oscar made our school curriculum work for him and his goals. His history teacher, Mr. Benham, corroborated this by saying, Oscar has an infectious enthusiasm and drive that he brings to class. He always strives for excellence and makes classes more interesting for both me and his classmates. Additionally, our shared history in the culinary arts has prompted many conversations about his various competitions, work, and different dishes he has tried his hand at. Oscar's passion became clear to me, and it is this passion, coupled with his rigorous work ethic, that will take him very far in life. Oscar does not put all his eggs in one basket as he excels in all subjects. It is clear that he has, has excelled in all areas of his education, as he was recently awarded the MPA Principals Award for Academic Excellence and Citizenship. He deserves the further recognition of being Student of the Year for House 2 Senior Pod, and we, his teachers, have all benefited from his presence in our classroom as he raises the bar for other students. It is an honor to have had Oscar in my English class, and an honor to be able to award him the House 2 Senior Student of the Year. Congratulations, Oscar Allen. Hello. As you may know, uh, I'm Alec Robinson. I am the senior physics teacher for House 2. And I'm so excited to tell you about the second outstanding student for House 2. That student is Milana Brackett. I have been so lucky to get to know Milana this year, and I believe she truly represents the best that Noble High School has to offer. Let me start by sharing the first thing that I ever knew about Milana. At the beginning of the year, I asked all of my students what is most important to them. Milana said that what's important to her is her impact on the world. 
She shows this commitment through her actions every day. Whether it's working with the Red Cross to organize blood drives, volunteering at the Berwick Public Library, or simply being supportive of her friends and peers, it's clear that Milana wants to make the world a better place for everyone. This comes through in her work as a student, as she continually goes above and beyond to deepen her understanding of every topic. To Milana, learning is not just about grades, getting into a good college, or being prepared for a job, though surely her academics have served her well in those regards. Instead, her dedication to learning goes deeper. Milana shows an understanding that through education, we become more connected to ourselves and to humanity, and that in learning about the world, we become more prepared to change it for the better. There is no shortage of other teachers with positive things to say about Milana. Senora Paz, who taught Milana in Spanish during her sophomore and senior year, says that it has been a wonderful experience to work with Milana. The beautiful transformation she has undergone through the years has been tremendous at different levels, personally, academically, and intellectually. Her work ethic is unmatched, as is her sweet, caring, and fun spirit. Milana makes class fun for me to teach. It inspires me to keep on giving my best in every class we have together. Senora Guzman had very similar comments to make. She said, do not be fooled by Milana's quiet demeanor. She is a force in the classroom. With her down-to-earth nature, she leads by example and is always curious to know more. Milana is the kind of student that makes a teacher want to improve their craft. Her kindness and leadership has left an imprint on our classes and has made Noble High School a better place. Mr. Parr says, I have been impressed by Milana since her freshman year when she first appeared in my Google Meets AP Human Geography classroom. Despite the difficulties of the pandemic, Milana excelled and she has continued to do so throughout her high school career. Her senior project on banned books was so impressive and it's been a pleasure to have her insight in our civil rights class this year. Not to mention, she was a lot of fun on our trip to the American South. All I can do is echo the sentiments of these teachers. As a person, Milana is unique, caring, curious, independent, and hilarious in her own special wholesome way. As a student, she excels in every regard. Milana plans on becoming a teacher, and I'm sure she will have a tremendously positive impact on countless lives in and outside of the classroom for years to come. Please join me in celebrating Milana Brackett. All righty, congratulations, House Two students. Next, I am announcing Ms. Jenica Osborne, who will be announcing the salutatorian of the class of 2024. Good evening. My name is Jenica Osborne, and it has been an absolute privilege to have known Alec Terrio, not only as a student, but also as a friend and a person I admire. Before teaching him, I heard about his extraordinary French skills and kindness, and then I met him. I immediately saw what the hype was all about. He has, a, he has had the highest French GPA since the eighth grade, received the seal of biliteracy with an advanced score, is a leader in the French Mentors and French National Honor Society, and he traveled with our program to Quebec City and New Orleans. What stands out the most for me about Alec is that he is way more than an academic. He is a true gentleman, a leader, a philosopher, a scientist, a musician, a humanitarian, an old soul, and a linguist. 
you could easily call him a modern day Renaissance man because a Renaissance man has an insatiable curiosity and a relentless pursuit of knowledge and mastery over a broad range of fields. And that right there is Alec Terrio. I am honored that he asked me to introduce him tonight. Alec's academic successes and leadership positions at Noble are well known, although he is quiet about them. He has taken nine AP courses while being an active member of the National Honor Society, Chevalier, Project Search, Math Team, Maine High School Quiz Show, and various Excel programs. He is the most gifted linguist I've ever taught, but he never chose to take the easy path, even with his natural skills. His constant devotion, thirst for knowledge, and desire to develop his fluency have been impressive. He was on Duolingo regularly when it wasn't required. He worked hard, thought deeply, wrote extensively, researched, asked questions, appreciated nuances and idioms, debated fiercely with his friends at his table, I don't always know what it was about, and read until he was confident that he fully mastered the material. Be it about verb tenses, Voltaire's philosophy, how to discuss mental health, or the existentialism of the little prince. This intrinsic desire to truly learn and dig so profoundly into the subject matter sets him apart from his peers. He is a program's most fluent thinker, reader, speaker, and writer. I'm not naive. I often think that barely, Alec barely needed me to get him to where he is in his French. He's just that strong, so I feel blessed to have been his guide, support network, and sounding board. One of Alec's greatest pleasures in life is music. He loves jazz, folk, blues, and classic rock, The Beatles, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Led Zeppelin, just to name a few. We've laughed in class over the years over his utter disdain for some of the current pop music and money musical songs. This is just one example of how current trends don't sway him. He is confident and stands by his own convictions. Alec is a talented and passionate trombone player in the symphonic band and jazz ensemble. He's made it into the District Music Festival, District Jazz Festival, Maine All-State Concert Band, and the Maine Jazz, Main jazz All-State Band. His music teacher, Ms. Peard, said, he works with and mentors the younger students helping to grow our program. Alec always goes the extra mile, whether he is working to perform a solo in jazz or helping to set up the classroom. He will truly be missed next year as his presence exemplifies what the music department is. I witnessed his pure joy in New Orleans as he walked around the vibrant, busy city and soaked in culture, music, history, the food, and the shenanigans of our group. He told me that he loathed leaving New Orleans. So Alec, I encourage you to follow your heart and continue traveling and experiencing what brings you energy and happiness. Alec is grounded and his humor, moral compass, and sincerity never waver. I find him extremely witty, genuine, charming, mature, and above all, kind. He has greeted me daily with a bonjour madame and then asked how I'm doing. At the end of class, he always makes eye contact says merci and wishes me a good day. I'm not alone in this. He is like this with everyone. His English and AP Lang teacher, Ms. Jennings said, what stands out to me about Alec and his academic career after four years of knowing him is his immense desire to learn all that he can whenever he can. In reality, this is an understatement. There isn't a moment when Alec isn't putting forth his best effort regardless of how small the task might be. While those qualities are ones that I admire, what stands out to me even more is his kindness and, kindliness and friendliness. There has not been a time when I've seen Alec in the hallway or in class and he hasn't been the first to say hello and ask how I'm doing. It's those moments that exemplify someone's character the most. Mr. Bragdon, his AP World History teacher, echoed those sentiments and said, Alec is one of the top students I've had the pleasure of teaching. His desire to learn, combined with a personality that is steeped in kindness, make him an incredible human being. The world is better because of him. I've met Alec's family. He speaks very lovingly of them, and I can see where his strength of character, intellectual curiosity, and integrity comes from. I hold Alec in the highest regard, and have loved teaching him, his senior French peers, and the friendship that we have all developed and nurtured over the past five years in our French family. 
as the fox taught the, the, pit, the little prince. And I say to him now, nous nous sommes apprivoisés et nous nous sommes devenus amis. Et tu seras toujours pour moi unique au monde. I can say that quote to him now for many reasons, but maybe also because I know that he is quite good at shabugamopoli. He's an old soul. He is a master of deep sighs, and he is our own local trombone shorty. Alec will study biology at the University of Maine at Orno in the honors program. He also intends to continue with his French studies and practice music. I will miss seeing him every day, but I am thrilled for what he will accomplish since I know that it will be done thoughtfully with a compassionate and curious heart, mind, and soul. Please join me in congratulating this year's salutatorian, Alec Terrio. Next, we have the announcement of our valedictorian with Dr. Christian Giddings. Hello, my name is Christian Giddings, and I am the choral director here. And I am incredibly honored to be asked to speak at tonight's ceremony. And I'm very excited to see everyone and be a part of the celebration of the amazing accomplishments of these seniors. It is my distinct pleasure to be allowed to be speaking on behalf of an exceptional, dedicated, and deserving senior. Talissa Goulet is among the most dedicated musicians in my program, and that dedication extends into all aspects of her life as she is this year's valedictorian. Upon first meeting Talissa last year, it was readily apparent that she gives cares greatly about people and fosters a positive community and culture in the music department. Anything and everything I asked related to fostering community, she always took the initiative to spearhead and see it through. One of the most significant programs we started was the eighth grade mentoring program, Whole Notes and Half Notes, where we paired high school students with respective eighth graders new to the school to help them feel included and involved. Talissa was fundamental in the establishment of that program and took it upon herself to mentor multiple students throughout the last two, two years and by their accounts has made them feel welcome and safe as an eighth grader in a new school.
path you choose, I hope you will keep working hard, keep believing in yourself, and keep remembering that there is nothing you cannot do. Please accept my best wishes for a future filled with happiness and success. Joe Biden. And you all have a copy of this letter in your folder. Counselors, you ready? When I call your name, just come on down, get your folder, and then let's make a line again. Maybe a semicircle. There's 60 of you. We might have to do that geometry thing again. Oscar Allen. I'm going to keep reading just so we can get through this in a timely fashion, so bear with me. Ella Inania. Jackson Began. Jalen Belanger. Liliana Bent. Sobu Blake. Mackenzie Blanchett. Emily Bowen. Milana Brackett. Christopher Buckman. James Bugato. Elizabeth Buller. Connor Christensen. Sean Davis. Ella Duke. Ella Eckert. Addison Erickson Fudge. Alexis Erickson Fudge. Natasha Gadke. Lilou Jardin. Isabel Gleason. Gavin Goulet. Talissa Goulet. Jasmine Jelinek. Rachel Corner. Lilia Lambert. Adam Leach. Alyssa Lemke. Isabella Lemke, Kyla Libby, Cheyenne Leitz, Nolan Lowry, Braden Lutke, Addison Massey, Haley Matthews, Megan Mustafa, Sam Nguyen, Katherine Osborne, Malia Patello, Owen Porter, Elsie Powers, Ian Rudis, Adeline Russell, Willa Russell, Tanisa St. Eloy, Juliana Schmutz, Natasha Siebert, Nevaeh Smeaton Cormier, Charlotte Smith, Chloe Steinauer, Anna Streiner, Emma Talbot, Sophie Tetro, Alec Terrio, Trinity Valley, Benjamin Vanden Heuvel, Thomas Veit, 
Mackenzie Warren, Clara Williams, and Charlie Woodward. I guess my semicircle didn't work this time. There are too many of them. But congratulations to all of you. This is a major accomplishment, a GPA of 3.5 or higher to all of these students. All right, it's okay, go ahead. <laughs> nice job leading. And thank you to the counselors for that. That was a bit of a marathon. Our next presenter is Lieutenant, oh, Commander, Brian English. Commander English, are you in the house? Well, our next presenter is gonna be Nancy Samard, apparently. <laughs> our first award this evening is the Colonel Richard W. Stillings Scholarship. Colonel Stillings was many things to many people. He was a good soldier, a legislator, a planner, a police officer, an amateur historian, a lover of good books and libraries, a teacher, and a big brother. He was proud of all his accomplishments, but more than any of the others, he was the proudest of being a soldier and a teacher. He began his military career right out of high school as a private in the U U.S. Army Occupation Forces in the ba Bavarian Alps of Germany, and after completing college at the University of Maine, he served as an infantry platoon leader and company executive officer in Korea, where he was decorated for valor. He commanded the pl platoon holding Heartbreak Ridge at the time of the Korean ceasefire. He continued as an active member of the Armor Reserve, retiring with 35 years of service, as a colonel. He was a teacher here at Noble High School for many years, teaching history and government. When he died, he left a bequest to be administered by the American Legion, Charles S. Hatch Post, to provide a small scholarship to a graduating senior who would attend the University of Maine at Orono. An intelligent man and a strong leader, though not the best student, Dick placed different primary requirement for choosing the recipient of this, of this scholarship. While schol scholastic standing was desirable, the recipient should be chosen primarily for his or her leadership abilities, as Dick felt leadership was the most valuable attribute in any person's personality. With this in mind, it is my privilege this year to prevent, present the Colonel Richard W. Stilling Scholarship in the amount of $1,000 to Natasha Siebert. So before I continue with any more awards and scholarships, I just want to remind students, sometimes you're getting a letter tonight, sometimes you're getting a check. So hold on to what you have, because if you lose a letter, we can always print another one for you. If you lose a check, you might be out of luck. So pay special attention to the, infer to the packages that you're getting. Next. I am presenting the American Legion Scholastic Citizens Ship Award. And this 
bear with me. I have ne never read these things before in my life, so I'm flying by the seat of my pants up here. That's why I'm kind of tripping all over myself. Students of Noble High School, in recognition of the accomplishment attained as a winner of the American Legion Citizenship Award, and in further recognition of the possession of those high qualities of courage, honor, leadership, patriotism, scholarship, and service, necessary to the preservation and protection of the fundamental institutions of our nation and the advancement of our society. So we have two students from each town that um, attend Noble High School from North Berwick, and you can all come forward when I call you. We have Oscar Allen and Alexis Erickson Fudge. From Berwick, we have Ben Vanden Heuvel and Chloe Steinauer. And from Lebanon, we have Nevea Smeaton Cormier and Liam Allen. Congratulations to the American Legion Scholastic <laughs> Citizens. And now, I'd like to bring up Mr. Rich Otten, who will be distributing the Dr. William and Carolyn Lytle Memorial Scholarships. Good evening, everyone. Um, on behalf of the uh, Yorkshire Masonic Lodge and here in North Berwick, I would like to uh, congratulate all the graduating seniors and their families as well as uh, you go on this journey into the rest of your life and experiencing all kinds of great things. Um, we are the North Berwick Masonic Scholarship Association is the custodian of the William B. Lytle and Carolyn Lytle Memorial Scholarship, which was left in our care a number of years ago. And I'm happy to say that this year, we're able to uh, present $12,500 to a few, uh, split up between a few students. So without further ado, if these students would come up, uh, Ella Anania. Addison Erickson Fudge. <laughs> Lilia Lambert. Adam Leach. <laughs> Cody Marshan. and Katherine Osborne. Thank you very much, and we look forward to uh, helping some kids out next year.
Next, we have Timon Lemelin presenting the Philip Sullivan Memorial Scholarship. Good evening. My name is Timon Lemlin, and I'm honored to be here on behalf of Northeast Credit Union Foundation. Our mission is to enrich and nourish the lives of others, and our scholarship program is designed to help students continue their education. Northeast Credit Union Scholarship Program is awarded to a student member of the credit union who displays exceptional commitment to their academics, dedication to philanthropy, as well as leadership among their peers. On behalf of Northeast Credit Union Foundation, our board of directors, and all of us at Northeast Credit Union, I'm truly honored to award Malia Patello with the Philip W. Sullivan Memorial Scholarship <laughs> worth $5,000. My scholastic citizens, you also were supposed to get this little medal, and I forgot to give it to you because I was kind of panicked up here all by myself. So tomorrow we'll call you the guidance office, and those of you who got the scholastic award will give you your medal tomorrow. Sure. Next, we have Ms. Cynthia Playstead, who will be presenting the Lee M. Shipley Art Scholarship. Good evening, good evening, everybody. It is uh, my pleasure to present the Lee Morrison Shipley Scholarship. And um, she was just such a delightful human. I'm just very honored to do this tonight. Um, for three decades, she served our noble community. She inspired her students with her passion and love and creativity for art. The scholarship this $4,000 scholarship continues that legacy in her name, and she would be overjoyed that the winner of the scholarship has demonstrated the same creative spirit. Please join me in congratulating this year's Lee Morrison Shipley Scholarship winner, Katherine Osborne. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Playstead. Next, we have Ms. Jenica Osborne presenting the Le Chevalier Scholarship. All right. I am very proud to announce that this year's French National Honor Society, or Le Chevalier, as we call it, scholarship recipient is Alexis Erickson Fudge. <laughs> Alexis is the French Honor Society president, a second year French Five mentor, a third year French TA, and a recipient of the Seal of Biliteracy. She has been an integral part and passionate leader of the French program for the past five years. She plans to major in international affairs and political science at McGill University in Montreal, a bilingual city where she will continue her French studies in the classroom and on the streets. Our next presenter is Adam Leach, the National Honor Society President, and he will be presenting the Tyler Bisson Scholarship. Good evening. My name is AJ Leach, and I am the class of 2024's President of the National Honor Society. Today, I am here to present the Tyler Bisson Scholarship to this year's recipient. But how did the scholarship come to be? In the class of 2019's eighth grade year, Tyler Brisson's life was forever changed. A distracted driver rear-ended the vehicle that Tyler was in, resulting in severe head trauma. 
To this day, Tyler is left unable to do normal day-to-day -day activities on his own, meaning he needs 24-7 care and is unable to do the things he loves, one of which is sports. Tyler participated in basketball, football, and track, and engaged himself with eagerness and an unmatchable energy. When the class of 2019 scholars were admitted to the National Honor Society, they wanted to honor Tyler so that he would not be forgotten, as he would not be walking with the class as they graduated. Thus, the Tyler Brisson Scholarship was created. Now we review applicants by combing the passion that Tyler had for sports with the traits that uphold each member of the society. Applicants were asked to show their proficiency in academics, their character on the field and in the classroom, their perspective as a leader, and their future plans for collegiate sports, along with written recommendation from a coach. Myself and the other National Honor Society officers had a difficult time making the, a decision on who would receive this scholarship. I cannot stress enough how amazing every application was and how amazing the people who applied are. From all the officers and myself, it truly has been amazing to live alongside you and to learn and grow and laugh with each of you as well. We often sat in silence in the meeting where we made our decision, just thinking about each of you and what great scholars, characters, and leaders each of you are in sports and beyond. But only one could win, so after tallying our rankings, we came to our conclusion. The recipient of the 2024 National Honor Society Tyler Brisson Scholarship is Malia Patello. Thank you, AJ. Next, presenting the Teachers Association in Future in Education Scholarship, we have Ms. Sophie Larson. I put it on the podium here. Oh, that makes everything easy. Hello, um, I am Sophie Larson. I'm a teacher here, and I'm also the Vice President of the Teachers Association. Our mission is to support future educators and current educators, of course. Every year we raise funds for a scholarship for future educators, students who are going into education. Contributions come from teachers as well as admin at our school district. Um, so I want to take a moment to thank everybody who contributed towards this scholarship. I'm honored to be able to offer $1,000 scholarship to three students who are going into a future in education. Milana Brackett, Gavin Golet, and Chloe Steinauer, please come up here. Next, we have the Excel Scholarship being presented by Krista Bowie and David Parr. Hi, my name is Krista Bowie. I'm the director for our Excel program, which uh, serves our gifted and talented students. Um, tonight, we are fortunate to be able to give two scholarships, and I'm not going to say how much they are. They're for books. Um, the scholarship is given to students who have been a keystone in our program, who not only exemplify what it means to be innately curious, but have done so with a welcoming heart and a great sense of humor. Mr. Parr is gonna read about our first candidate. Thank you, Ms. Bowie. Uh, the first of our two recipients this evening has organized and participated in school-wide competitions been part of our school's trivia team on Maine Public Television, and she has chosen to enroll and succeed in some of our school's most rigorous courses. She also has been a fantastic addition to Excel's Project Search program for two years, offering insightful commentary and feedback all along the way. On a personal level, I have been struck by this student's willingness to help other students for no other reason than it is a kind thing to do. 
She takes risks, brings a smile to the classroom, and is a person with whom we will miss working every day. She also is kind almost to a fault, not telling me until just a few months ago about the pronunciation of her last name. It is my pleasure to award th this 2024 Excel Program Scholarship to Natasha Seibert. Seibert. All right, for our second award, I'm handing this award out. Um, I would like to acknowledge what a tour de force the student was in both matters of trivia and academia. Not only has this student successfully conquered Excel's cornucopia of classes, but he has done so with passion, joie de vivre, and an iconic fake mustache. Thank you for being so wonderfully talented and genuinely a beautiful soul, James Bugato. Alrighty, next we have our Biliteracy Seal Awards, and those are being presented by Jenica Osborne and Irene Guzman Rothwell. The main seal of Biliteracy is an award that recognizes student achievement in language learning. Students who are proficient in English and an additional language may earn the seal of biliteracy in demonstrating their proficiency in the second language through the four modalities of reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Keep going. I'll keep going. The students who received this award today started taking French or Spanish in eighth grade and continued learning the language for five years. We are still waiting for the scores of two students as of right now. We are proud to present the main Seal by Literacy Award to the following students. For French, we have Ella and Ania. James Bugato. <laughs> Addison Erickson Fudge. Alexis Erickson Fudge. <laughs> Malia Patello. Ian Rudis. And Alec Terriel. And for Spanish, uh, Milana Brackett. Brett Kamiski. <laughs> Alex.
Alexander Feist. Oops. Ella Duke. Gavin Golat. <laughs> Sophia Tetro. and Clara Williams. Hey, someone take a picture. Someone take a picture, please, of our crew. Thank you. Alrighty, next we have our SEAL Awards with Irene Guzman Rothwell and David Parr. Thank you. Good evening, I'm David Parr. I'm the Excel teacher for grades 9 through 12 here. I'm joined by Spanish teacher Senora Guzman Rothwell. Um, those of you who are unfamiliar with the SEAL Diploma Endorsement Program, we have two here at Noble High School. One is the SEAL program, one is for STEM. SEAL stands for Social Studies. English, arts, uh, and wait, language. <laughs> more language, sorry. <laughs> Panicking under the lights. Um, what we offer students here is an opportunity essentially to uh, take on a mini major. They dedicate their energies toward achieving uh, not only a breadth of knowledge in the particular path that they choose, but also high achievement uh, and having some great experiences along the way. We have uh, three categories, Path A, Path B, and Path C, that we're going to award this evening. For Path A, which is um, English and Social Studies, our first recipient goes to, is Lilia Lambert. Also earning path, path A designation is Ella Duke. <laughs> Next, we congratulate Liliana Bent. And finally, Milana Brackett. Path B in the SEAL endorsement program is for the arts. This can be for visual arts, performing arts, and um, we are honored to kick things off with the diploma endorsement this evening in Path B for Catherine Osborne. Our next recipient, Willa Russell. <laughs> Next, 
Next, we have Megan Mustafa. Next, we'd like to recognize Talissa Golay. And our final recipient for the Path, Path B endorsement, Gavin Golette. The seal endorsements, path C, is for world language. You heard me say Lilia Lambert's name earlier for path A. Occasionally, we get a student taking on the double challenge of earning two endorsements, and she has done it this evening. Congratulations to Lilia for path C as well. Next, join me in honoring Alexis Erickson Fudge. And last but not least, Addison Erickson Fudge. Well done to all of you. Thank you, folks. Next, I'd like to bring up Ms. Danny Minuti and Mr. Adam Reed to present the STEM Awards. Right, thank you. Um, I'm Danielle Minuti. Adam Reed. And um, the STEM Diploma Endorsement is a four-year program where uh, students identify that they want to either pursue or are interested in pursuing science, technology, engineering, and math. And there are two um, kind of paths that they can follow, either general, and those tend to be more life science or technology-based, um, and engineering. So we have a handful of students that we would like to award. Um, these students have had a B minus or better in all of their STEM classes, and they have pursued uh, two 30-hour ELOs that put them into either college classes, internships, basically anything outside of the school that allows them to explore their interests a little bit further. All right, our first recipient of the STEM award um, in engineering is Connor Christensen. Next, I'm not sure she's here, but I'm still going to announce her. Uh, in the general path, Haley Matthews. And in the general path, Natasha Seibert. In the engineering path, Anna Streiner. In the general path, Aiden Sullivan. And as you guys are coming up, there's pins in the back that are supposed to be part of your regalia, so don't lose those. <laughs> in the general path, Sophie Tetrault.
Next, in engineering, we have Ben Vanden Heuvel. And then we've got, in the general path, Declan Winston. Thank you all. Next, we have Mr. A.J. Dufort presenting the Tyler Grand Mason Melmac Scholarship. So each high school in the state of Maine has the opportunity to select a student to receive the Tyler Grand Mason Melmac Scholarship. There are a number of criteria that are listed that they hope the recipients will have for qualities, but there are three in particular that I wanted to point out. Number one, the recipient has faced significant challenges and obstacles in pursuit of their higher education. Number two, the recipient makes a difference in the lives of others. And number three, they have the potential to bring about positive change in the world. Our 2024 Tyler Grand Mason Melmac Scholarship recipient is Michaela Tibbetts. Okay, we're almost there, folks. So we had a late arrival um, that didn't make it to the program. This is the Worthington Scholarship. We have four students who are receiving that, so I will do that ever so quickly, and then we will move on to the final push of the night, which is when we award all of the local scholarships with the counselors. So this year, the Worthington Scholarship Foundation will award a total of $10 million in scholarships to over 750 students throughout Maine's 134 public high schools. These multi-year renewable scholarships range in value from $6,000 for those attending a Maine community college to $20,000 for those attending one of the foundation's partnering four-year colleges all located in Maine. The intention of the Worthington Scholarship Foundation is threefold, to increase the accessibility of college by reducing financial barriers, to provide support for scholars to persist in college, and to help minimize the risk of incurring crippling student loan debt. The Worthington Scholarship Foundation is proud to partner with Noble High School and congratulates this year's graduates. We look forward to supporting Noble graduates for years to come. So we have four students. I'm gonna call you and have you come on up here. Our first recipient is Chris Buckman. Chris plans to attend the University of Maine Orono, and he is receiving up to $20,000 in scholarships over the next four years. I asked him if he wanted to stay and wait for his other recipients, but he didn't want any part of that. <laughs> hmm. Our next recipient is Sam Nguyen. <laughs> Sam will be attending the University of Southern Maine, and I'll talk slowly, because it's a long way down here will be receiving up to $20,000 over the next four years. <laughs> next, we have Alec Terrio. <laughs> Alec 
Malik is attending the University of Maine Orono, and he will be receiving up to $20,000 over the next four years. And our last recipient is Gabrielle Morin. Gabrielle plans to attend the University of Maine at Farmington and will be receiving $20,000 over the next four years. All righty, we are now shifting into the local scholarships. I am going to do my students, and then I'm going to pass it on to Ms. Jackson. So my first student tonight is Michaela Tibbetts. <laughs> Michaela is receiving the Michael T. Wick and Dustin T. Wick scholarship for $500. Michaela is attending Colby Sawyer College in the fall. And my next recipient is Alex Terrio. <laughs> Alec. Sorry, I should have just kept you here. Alec is receiving the Sullivan Berwick Alumni Association Scholarship, which is 90% interest of whatever they have. So we, we have no idea how much it is. But, and Alec's going to UMO next year. Congratulations. And now, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Jackson. My first student is Ella Anania. <laughs> Ella is the recipient of the Dorothy M. Crane Memorial Scholarship for $200 the Kenny Bunk Savings Bank Scholarship for $1,000, Norman B. Sherwood Scholarship for $1,000, and the Partners Bank Scholarship for $1,000. Ella plans to attend Colby College in the fall. <laughs> My next student is Liliana Bent. <laughs> Lily is the recipient of the Sanford Kiwanis Scholarship for $500 the Norman B. Sherwood Scholarship for $1,000, and Lily plans to attend Connecticut College in the fall. <laughs> Connor Christensen. <laughs> Connor is the recipient of the Donald R. Folsom Scholarship for $1,000, and Connor plans to attend Louisiana State University. Sean Davis. Sean is the recipient of the Joe Chandler Memorial Scholarship for $1,000 and the Noble High School Football Booster Scholarship for $500. Sean plans to attend Husson University. Daniel Fuller. Daniel. Uh, is a recipient of the IOOF Echo Lodge number 52 scholarship for $1,000, the Moore Memorial Scholarship for $500, Norman B. Sherwood Scholarship for $1,000, North Berwick Policeman's Benevolent Scholarship Scholarship um, for $250, and the Savannah Picard Scholarship for $500. Danny plans to attend Thomas College. Adam Leach. AJ is the recipient of the Colada E. Covey Scholarship for $200, Noble 50 Plus Club Scholarship for $100, Norman B. Sherwood Scholarship for $1,000, Partners Bank Scholarship for $1,000, the Sanford Springville Fish and Game Scholarship for $1,000, York County Retired Educators Association Scholarship for $1,500. AJ plans to attend the University of New Hampshire. <laughs> Thomas Mulligan. 
Thomas is the recipient of the Eller, Elliot G. Gray Family Scholarship for $500, the Noble Wrestling Booster Scholarship for $500, and the Noble Youth Wrestling Scholarship for $250. Thomas plans to attend Norwich University in the fall. I'll turn it over to Mr. Kelsey. All right, the first student that I would like to announce is Talissa Goulet. She is receiving the Sullivan Berwick Alumni Association Scholarship, which uh, will result in 90% interest, and she's attending EMCC in the fall. My next student is Maddox Jordan. Maddox will be receiving the Bill Parody Running Scholarship for $1,000 and the Sanford Springvale Fish and Game Scholarship for $1,000. The uh, presenter for the Bill Parody Scholarship wasn't uh, able to make it here, so if you'll just bear with me, I have a little thing to read on behalf of them. I would like to uh, convey how happy I am to see this young athlete recognized and chosen to receive the Bill Parody Memorial Running Scholarship. Bill loved running. He was a NHS class uh, of 1970 alumni, I believe his class was the first class to graduate from the New Noble High School. Run and bike and Bill started running later in life. He was never a high school athlete. He once told me if he knew how much fun running was, he would have signed up when he was a freshman. It pleases me to give this award to Maddox Jordan. His commitment to the sport makes him very deserving. All my best to Maddox and his family. Congratulations, Kathy Berry Parody. My next student is Tucker Lavasser. Tucker will be receiving the Fred W. Feel Scholarship for $300, the Lavasser Family Scholarship for $1,000, the Noble Boys Soccer Booster Scholarship for $500, the Unity Historical Prize Scholarship for $1,000, and will be attending Onondaga uh, Community College in the fall. My next student is Brayden Lutke. Braden will be receiving the Noble Youth Baseball Scholarship for $500 and will be attending a university in the fall. The next student I'd like to call up is Cody Marshan. Cody will be receiving the Norman B. Sherwood Scholarship for $1,000, the Noble Wrestling Booster Scholarship for $500, and the Noble Youth Wrestling Scholarship for $250. He will be attending UMO in the fall. Okay. Next up is Katherine Osborne. Catherine will be receiving the Lori A. Guptill Art Scholarship for $1,000, the Kathy Mallet Art Scholarship for $1,000, and the Marie E. Dutch Memorial Scholarship for $300, and will be attending the University of Vermont in the fall. Yeah. My next student is Elsie Powers. Elsie will be receiving the American Legion Outstanding Girls Citizenship Award for $300. She will be attending the University of Connecticut in the fall. Okay. Next up is Chloe Steinhauer. <laughs> Chloe.
Chloe will be receiving the Denise Abbott Memorial Scholarship for $500 and the John W. Sullivan Scholarship for $1,000. She will also be attending the University of Maine at Farmington in the fall. And my last student of the night, before I pass things on to Mr. Lounsbury, is Sophie Tetro. <laughs> Sophie will be receiving the Berwick Youth Soccer Association Scholarship for $250, the Earl C. Dutch Outdoor Education Scholarship for $300, the Lawrence Edward Willie Memorial Scholarship for $1,000, the Moore Memorial Scholarship for $500, the Sanford Springvale Fish and Game Scholarship for $1,000, and the Zachary Wentworth Memorial Scholarship for $500. She will be attending the University of New Hampshire in the fall. All right, folks, I'm the last one, so let's get her done. We got Addison Erickson Fudge. Addison is receiving the David R. Vetta Memorial Scholarship for $1,000, and the Stephen Philbrick Scholarship for $300, and Addison will be attending the University of Maine at Orono in the fall. Lilia Lambert. <laughs> Lilia is receiving the Noble 50 Plus Club Scholarship for $100, a Norman B. Sherwood Scholarship for $1,000, the Richard Ronco Memorial Scholarship for $100, and the Specialty Services Scholarship for $500, and will also be attending the University of Maine at Orono. Malia Patello. <laughs> Malia is receiving the Christian Ellen Fredette Jackson Memorial Scholarship for $5,000. The Kelly A. Bourbon Memorial Scholarship for $3,000. And the Wentworth Douglas Hospital Auxiliary Scholarship for $2,000 and will be attending Bowdoin College in the fall. Tanisa Santiello. Tanisa is receiving the Sanford Kiwanis Scholarship for $500 and will be attending the University of New England in the fall. <laughs> Ms. Samad will wrap it up. All righty, just a little over two hours. That's not too bad, right? I know you're all ready to go home. Thank you all so much for coming out. I would be remiss to not take a minute to thank one woman who's sitting way in the back. Um, Jen Varney is the one who really, I know AJ thanked all the school counselors, but it's really Jen Varney who pulls together all the scholarships from contacting the scholarship foundation people who give the money to arranging for them to be up loaded to going Mary for students to apply, to getting the letters written, so the whole shebang. None of this would be possible without Jen Varney, so let's give a round of applause to Jen Varney. Thank you all for coming. Have a great evening. <laughs>